there is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. Hope, it's a glorious thing. When we boil our lives down to their most fundamental elements, the strongest thing any of us possesses is hope. We use the word glibly, hope to see you soon, hope all goes well, hope you have a good time. But the Greek root for hope signals a meaning far greater. The Greek form is elpis, which means expectation, trust, and confidence. It comes from the root word elpo, which means to anticipate with pleasure and to welcome. So fundamentally, hope is the root of every human life. To live is to hope. To hope is to live. We often feel like we've lost hope, and that's the most desolate feeling known to the human experience. It's at the root of some of the most wasteful, tragic, and unimaginable acts in humanity. To us, one of the most beautiful things about hope is that it can be restored. We've been in times of great sadness, in times of great victory. In each, there is hope. Join us in our next great adventure, Restoring Hope. We should really begin at the beginning, and for us, the beginning of this journey began a little over three years ago when we bought a home in Louisville, Georgia. She was called the Little House, but we, we named her Louise. We had no idea, no idea how many people were rooting for Louise, how many people literally across the globe that had dreamed of restoring her, of saving her, but just didn't know if it was possible. Everyone that shared that dream became part of our support system. And they held our hands as we started the massive undertaking of saving the big little house. July 20th, our 24th wedding anniversary, the unthinkable happened. One lightning strike, one lightning strike, coupled with 200 year old heart pine and a home with no windows created the perfect storm. And we all watched Louise burn to the ground in 15 minutes. There was nothing left of Louise, nothing. It was like a movie set almost. He walked up to a facade and through the front door was the exterior. There was no physical structure. No real chance to complete the challenge we'd taken on. No real chance to see a dream realized. No real chance to accomplish this task we'd set for ourselves. It was unbelievable. The restoration community surrounded us with love and support, but we felt like we would be forever just a missing piece to our puzzle. A chapter left unfinished and a little bit of lost hope. It took three years, three years, but we again found hope in Natchez, Mississippi. We found the chance to come full circle. But this story also begins with loss. March 24th, 2023, Hope Farm, one of the oldest structures in a city filled with amazing historic structures, went up in flames. We were still in the process of finishing Pearl. We were up late. We were in the throes of those last minute touches that were exhausting us, taking forever and While we were working, we saw and smelled a huge plume of smoke that was rising over the city. We could see it from the living room window. This time, fire claimed not only an irreplaceable historic structure, 
but the life of one of Natchez's legendary ladies. We were, of course, aware of Hope Farm. And it's, right. it's we'd driven by it yes. dozens of times. And it's important to Natchez. We knew it was, this, not, it was this historically important home, one of the earliest, probably second earliest structure in the city. Um, architecturally so important, but also it's been the home place of some of the most important, indomitable, strong women who are really responsible for what Natchez is today. So we were very well aware of it, but we didn't have the chance to meet Miss Ethel, the owner. And Miss Ethel was one of a kind. She was one of the last of a breed of women that I don't know will, if they'll ever exist like this woman again. I was named for my mother's mother, Ethel. And then the children all call me Miss Ethel, mom or Miss Ethel, and the grandchildren call me Granny Apple or Granny. They couldn't say Ethel, so they said Apple. And I loved it, so I said, I want to be Apple. I don't want to be Ethel. Ethel Green Banta was a native Natchezian whose roots ran very deep in this fertile soil, but she fell in love with a Yankee, moved to New Jersey, and raised a beautiful family with the love of her life, Bruce. We were in this apartment on 61st, and a friend of mine from Natchez was Bruce's roommate at Columbia Law School, as luck would have it. And so Chandler Warren, was my friend's name, brought Bruce over one night to meet all of us. And he actually asked, had a date with one of my roommates. But, um, and I had a date that night with my future brother-in-law that married Ruth Ellen, who was a doctor and was in New York on, at a meeting. So isn't it funny how all that happens? Anyway, um, then about a month went by and Bruce called me and we started going out. What was your first impression of him? So good looking. Oh, he was a handsome man. Describe him. He was tall, six feet, six one, the bluest eyes I've ever seen, huge big blue eyes, and black hair, very slender, and probably the smartest man I've ever known. Well, I was married um, to the Episcopal Church, September 7th, and um, the Bantos came down. I was married Saturday night, and all the Bantos and everybody came on Thursday. So typical Southern style, there was a luncheon, a, a party on Thursday night, a luncheon on Friday, the Hersel dinner on Friday night, another luncheon on Saturday, and then the wedding. And Big Jim, Bruce's daddy, said a little while later, you know, I was in Natchez for five days and I never saw the river. Well, he, he had an aortic valve leakage and um, which even I could tell was bad on the x-rays. The operation went fine, but he developed a staph infection and he died on the operating table. The third operation was, he was on, just turned 51, but it was not easy and the memories were horrible. I mean, the fun memories, but painful. That's why it was so wonderful for me to move to Natchez. Hope Farm, the house I own now, suddenly came on the market I knew the house well. The Millers that owned it were dear friends of my mother and daddy's. And it came on the market, their nephew had inherited it because they had no children, with everything in it. Silver, china, furniture, towel, sheets, everything. And I thought, well, I better not turn this down. You know, this seems a nice way to move. And I run a bed and breakfast and I'm a tour house. Because in 1775, the house was built. Wonderful house. In the early 20th century, Hope Farm was the home of Catherine Grafton Miller. Catherine Grafton Miller is often referred to as the founder of the Natchez Annual Pilgrimage, the second oldest home tour in America. In her 1938 publication, Natchez of Long Ago and the Pilgrimage, Catherine Miller wrote that the idea of entertaining the world at Old Natchez every spring came to her during a prolonged illness, during which, according to her nurses, she talked nothing but of old houses, flowers, Camellia Japonicas, and the Garden Club. She became the event's primary promoter, traveling across the country, presenting illustrated lectures using a projector and a collection of lantern slides. 
charming audiences and enticing them to visit her hometown. The pilgrimage initiated the city's and the state's heritage tourism industry and launched the historic preservation movement in Mississippi. In 1926, Catherine and her husband, Balfour Miller, had already bought and restored Hope Farm, the former home of Spanish Governor Carlos de Grand Pre. We had not seen Hope Farm. We had no idea what it even looked like, really. Of course, we'd seen it in books, but we'd never been into the property. It was private. And I sent a text to Carter and said, this feels like an opportunity for us to complete a journey that we started three years ago and never got to finish. If Hope Farm, if there's anything of Hope Farm left to salvage and to restore, we would like to discuss that opportunity with exactly. you. Exactly. And immediately got a text, I thought this is probably too soon, this is probably in poor taste, and immediately got a text back from Carter saying, can you come over here? We're here right now, can you come look and see if you think you could save this property? Because that that would be our goal but we don't think anybody is really going to be up to the challenge exactly and that's we'd heard that before nobody's up to nobody's the challenge, up to the challenge. Uh, <laughs> those are so, our favorite properties <laughs> right don't don't uh, say that to us <laughs> um so we came over immediately and it was it was hard to take it I was, mean, it it was, was you know first of all you know there's been loss of life exactly. which that is always it just adds another layer. There's the loss of the architecture, which we're used to dealing with. We know we can fix that, but you can never fix the loss of life. And so that was, it was a very emotional, like first walk through. It felt like you were sort of walking on holy ground. You know, it was just, you want to be so respectful um, exactly. in that moment. But we could see that there was a lot of original material that was salvageable. salvageable. Yeah. And it, it sort of felt like pretty quickly to me, once I started hearing sto more stories about Miss Ethel and her love of Hope Farm, that the thing that would honor her legacy the most was to say, we will step up and save this property. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And soon after that, uh, we met a couple of her children. Wonderful people. Who were wonderful people. Can I tell you how terrified I was at that meeting though? Oh, I know. Because we, Kevin and I had been here a few times. We came with the structural engineer um, and then we had come a few times by ourselves and we just felt this sense of belonging and of peace and of rightness in this project. But to really make it ours, the Historic Natchez Foundation said, the children want to meet you. I, I have social anxiety anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, I thought it would go well, but it went even better yeah. than I thought. I'm I mean, so sad they don't live here. I know. These we were said. these were great people and they told us afterwards that that sealed the deal for them because we got along so well. Which I'm glad cuz I'm telling you I was a disaster. <laughs> I was so nervous and I cuz you don't want to come across as like, oh, you know, you just you don't you want to be sympathetic and thoughtful, mindful of what's going on in their lives, but at the same time you want to tell them we can do this and we're worthy and can we please? I was a wreck. I was a wreck. <laughs> but apparently it went okay. But it was a win-win. Basically they were so excited to have someone who was so excited to save this property. And can I tell you what a blessing that is? Because this property oh, yeah. could very easily be subdivided and turned into you know, a subdivision of 20 houses. Yeah, anytime there's several acres in town and a uh, a lot of people looking for smaller houses. Investment opportunity, you know. They could have very easily said, nope, we're gonna go to the highest bidder and we're going to sell this property to a developer, knock and down the house and call it good. And so had they not been Ethel Banta's children, I think really, I think she probably exactly. instilled, she instilled in them right. a love of Natchez, a love of history, a love of architecture. The son is actually an archeologist, so passionate about history, they wanted they wanted to save it. Yeah. And so it was 
like I said, it was a win-win. And um, so now it's on to... Now it's on... Now it's on to the work. Now it's on to the work. <laughs> Restoration Nation community. My name is Ruth. I am the eldest daughter of Miss Ethel, who lived at Hope Farm for 40 years. And on behalf of myself and my family, we are so grateful that Lane and Kevin 
are bringing Hope Farm into your wonderful community. Certainly the fire and my mother's death were quite tragic, but given those circumstances, we can't imagine a better outcome than having Lane and Kevin bring their vision, their enthusiasm, and their love of history, which is similar to my mother's love of history, to Hope Farm, and to also bring Hope Farm into your wonderful community. So we won't be able to be there in August at the Restoring Hope festivities, but we are looking forward to everything that Lane and Kevin will be doing at Hope Farm and what they're going to be learning about the history of the property. And we expect they'll be adding so much to the history of the Natchez community. So thank you all for welcoming Hope Farm into our Restoration Nation. Thank you, Lane and Kevin, for being the next caretakers, owners, and stewards of Hope Farm. We're really excited to see what the next chapter of this wonderful property will bring. Thanks. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our next project. We hope that you will follow along. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of work. <laughs> it's going to be a long time. And too. it's going to take a while. It is. But we hope you'll join us uh, and celebrate and commiserate and understand and rejoice with us as we start the journey of restoring hope.